Hey, hey, everybody, welcome back to True Fan Form. I'm your host, Jay. Now, it's been quite a few months since I last posted a video because, to be quite honest with you, oh, gentle viewers, this year has been horrible to my family. Oh, oh my god, it's just, oh, it's been horrible. Now, I don't want to really go into a lot of specifics because it's personal and I really don't want to put a lot of personal stuff onto this channel at this point. But let's just say, I hate the year 2019. I cannot wait for it to be over, and I sincerely, sincerely hope the year 2020 is better to my family. Oh, oh, please let it be better. So anyway, between all the personal stuff going on and my job and all that time and energy that requires, I've either been too busy or just too exhausted to make and post a video. But I've got so many, so many ideas, I have so much to say, and I just don't want that this channel fall apart. So here I am with, the, with a video which I hope will be the first in a series where I discuss fantasy world building. Specifically, ideas and tri tips and tricks that I have that I feel can really make a fantasy world your own and really help you think about it, make your world unique. Because as a lifelong lover of fantasy novels, one of the aspects I enjoy most about every fantasy novel I read is the world building and how every writer could create a world that is unique and specific to their tastes and their ideas and seeing how really there are no rules in fantasy writing. You know, where I, one writer can say take a classic staple of fantasy like the dragon and use it in a way that is so different and unique than say another writer or the way they use elves or dwarves or whatever. So I, I love fantasy I love fantasy writing. I love world building. And personally, I'm always thinking of ways that I can make every new world I create a little bit different, a little bit more unique than any others I've previously written. Now, with all that out of the way, let me get to the subject of this video, writing body language specifically for the non-human. Because it, it really makes sense that a non-human character is not going to have the same sort of body language that a human would have where certain you know or even if they do certain movements or gestures that is similar to what a human might do it might have a whole different meaning to either that character or the species that character comes from now interestingly my ideas on body language for the non-humans and how really different it could be came not from reading a fantasy novel but rather a sci-fi novel, specifically the military sci-fi novel The Dark Wing by Walter H. Hunt. There we go. Now, I'm not really a big fan of military sci-fi. I mean, I've read a few of his books. I like them. But it doesn't really grab me. But I have to say, I like The Dark Wing. It's an interesting novel, and I do recommend it for anyone if they happen to see it on a shelf somewhere. Now, anyway... In the Dark Hunt, there's an alien species called the Zor, who have these wings sprouting from their backs. And what's really interesting is the Zor use their wings to communicate in a way that is just as complex as a vocal language. In fact, in the Zor's wing language, every position and every gesture of the wings not only has its own meaning, it has its own name. For example, the Cloak of Defense is a name given to a specific posture of the wings. Now, even though it's been a number of years since I've read The Dark Wing, the Zor's wing language always stuck with me because it just, it seems right that non-humans will not always act just as humans do, that their body language is going to be unique, is going to be based off of not only their own specific anatomies, but also their own specific cultures and ways of thinking that might not correspond exactly to how humans think and act. So really, whenever I create a non-human character, I always try to think of how can I write their body language that is unique, that is specific, and a little bit different than a human's body language. Uh, for example, I'm currently writing a book in which one of my characters is, for all intents and purposes, a lizard man, and he has a tail. So I thought, rather than show up a lot of expression with his face, he prefers to show expression with his tail, so that if his tail curls in one way or the other, that means he's angry or frustrated. Or if it stiffens, that means he's wary, that he feels that there's danger about. 
you know, again, use it again. So while his face is pretty much impassive, his tail is very lively. Um, another example of body language used in a non-human species from my own work is I'm currently developing a wing species. As I'm working on the species and working out how their society works, I am thinking about how do they use their wings and how do they communicate with their wings throughout the society. Um, one thing I thought of is that when two members of the species meet, it is customary for them to bow to each other and spread their wings out a little bit. They don't, they don't fully extend their wings, but just, just extend them just a little bit, spread out a little bit. Now, it's also customary that when the members of the species are of two different social statuses, the person of the lower status will bow deeper and spread their wings out a little bit more as a sign of respect to the person of the higher status. Now again, I'm still developing this species, I'm still thinking of how I can use their wings, but for me, their wings will become a very important part of their species and how they communicate with each other and how they communicate with others. And that's always fun to keep in mind. Now, I, I will say this though, writing body language for the non-human can be a little bit difficult because it does involve thinking, you know, like a non-human, you know. And that's, I find that a little bit hard as well as also writing about anatomy that I don't have because I might forget that that anatomy exists. So I think, oh wait, yeah, he's got a tail. How can I use his tail? Or that character's got wings or gills or whatever. How do I use it? But even though it's a bit complicated, it's still a lot of fun because it makes me stop and think about the character and really ponder what does this character do and how do they move and how does this species move? And how does this society use their own particular anatomies? And it's it's fun. And it makes me and it makes me feel like I'm a better writer because I think of this because I really want to give depth and a uh, own flavor to my characters, both human and non-human. Now, if you want to write a non-human character, you've got a few different ways you can go in regards to body language. Now, if you're writing an, a character that's based on an animal, like a dog, a cat, a lizard, bird, whatever, you can just simply look up the body language of that specific animal and use that as a reference for your own character's body language. You know, for example, we all know that if a cat presses its ears, you know, to its skull and it bares its teeth, that means it's angry. So you can have a character who is a cat person who does the same thing as a sign of anger. Uh, now, if you're creating a character that doesn't exactly have an analogy with anything on this planet, then you're pretty much free to create a body language that fits the unique anatomies of that particular creature. So maybe you have a creature that has tentacles. So how it moves its tentacles could display its emotions or its overall feelings. I don't know, maybe the character's skin changes color and you can use that as a way of showing particular that particular character's moods or what emotion emotional state however i will say this though whatever you do whatever body language you give a character or a species please be consistent make sure that the gestures mean the same throughout your work because if you because if you don't do that it's just going to take readers out because they're going to go wait wait a second and or, okay that character did this with its tail and that meant that but now it's doing the same thing, but it means that? What, wait, what's going on? What's happening? Yeah, so again, make sure you have a good understanding of your characters and really ground down the body language so you don't avoid inconsistencies and confuse the reader. So, um, you know what, folks? That's what I have to say about writing body language for a non-human. It can be complex, but it can be fun because it can really give your character its own identity, its own feel to it. But just please, whatever you write, be specific. So tell me, folks, what do you think? What kind of characters do you write? Do you think about body language a lot? Or don't you? Please, feel free to leave your comments below and like, subscribe, share, do whatever if you like my content. If you don't, then you don't have to. But I would appreciate it. So again, uh, thanks, folks. Uh, I'm really glad to be doing videos again. Hopefully I'll keep it up now that things are a bit, a bit more quiet. And I really want to continue this series on world building and giving my own thoughts of 
what I feel you can do to make your own fantasy work or sci-fi work or whatever work a bit more unique, a bit more, you know, you. So um, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you next time.